Dear participants, I would like to welcome all of you and also I would like to thank to, to the UI Green Ministry Administration for giving us this opportunity to present our studies in such, an, uh, vali such a valuable presentation. I am uh, Professor Dr. Serkan Appasol from Cyprus International University, uh, working as uh, advisor to the Executive Board, Board of Trustees, and also uh, Dean of Engineering Faculty. I am the director of these studies, uh, which are carried out under the philosophy of sustainability. So we are carrying out many studies under sustainability. And briefly today, I am going to present you some of these studies. Uh, in, initially, I'm going to talk about Cyprus International University. Uh, then I will talk about energy management, efficiency, efficiency and renewable energy studies. Uh, after the brief information regarding these topics, I will talk on water management, efficiency and recycling implementations. And finally, I will complete my remarks with engagements uh, with CIU community. Uh, Cyprus International University is a, is a young university. Uh, it's founded in, in 1997 uh, with just few staff and uh, nearly 100 students. And uh, up today, it, it's continuing to growing and now we reach over 1,000 staff and uh, 20,000 students. Uh, we have a campus area nearly 630 meters, thousand meters square which is nearly 40% of this uh, campus area is covered with vegetation and plants. So we can uh, easily mention that we have a green campus uh, in the capital city of Northern Cyprus, Nicosia. Uh, we joined to Green Mapics in uh, 2018 and our studies are, were begun to evaluate by the uh, commissions of the Green Mapics since then. So. Uh, in the first year of ours, we were ranked at the 375th position, and the last year we reached to 111th. Uh, so we have an increasing uh, motivation with this uh, increasing success in green metrics in sustainability. Uh, what we did uh, as sustainability roadmap in CIU, CIU has a, a, a approximately 12, even 13 years uh, history about sustainability. We start to work on sustainability with the uh, establishment of uh, center of excellency topics, which are, uh, or let's say decision of these topics in energy and environment in 2009. And after the uh, establishment of, uh, after giving this decision, we established uh, em environmental engineering and uh, energy systems engineering departments in Cyprus International University. In uh, 2011, we established a Sustainable Energy Research Center, uh, which is one of the most active centers in the university. And uh, we started work on mainly re renewable energy systems, which at that time we believed that uh, they will be the sustainable solution for the energy problem in the world. Uh, and uh, with these studies, we carried out a big project in the campus. We installed nearly 1.3 megawatt photovoltaic panels and commissioned this system in the 2015. In 2016, of course, parallel to this work, we carried out too many studies and uh, we start to get the result of another study, which is uh, uh, our science and technology building. Uh, we constructed a building as a smart building, energy efficient building. Uh, which has too many features about energy efficiency and renewable energy implementations. So I will briefly talk about this in our presentation in the further slides. Then in 2017, uh, we start uh, working on sustainability with our students. Till that time, we were working as administration on sustainability and energy management or energy projects, let's say. But after this time, we started uh, cooperate or let's say incorporate our students in these projects also. So our students start to work on sustainability projects, produce their own projects, offer their projects, and we change our role as the administration. We start to be the coordinator, or let's say the organi organization, at the organization point of these projects. So we establish the Students for Sustainable Campus 
uh, activity, let's say, or uh, team. Uh, in 2018, with the uh, workshop that individual I uh, participated in Cork, Ireland, uh, of Green Matrix Organization, we decided to uh, establish an office which will handle all the processes regarding sustainability in the campus. So uh, directing, announcing, archiving, uh, all the events that will be carried out. Uh, and uh, till then we start to work more, uh, let's say, organized about sustainability. In 2019, we had another decision and uh, with the aim of being net zero campus uh, about the carbon emissions, we decided to install a biogas plant. So uh, we start to work on this project, uh, which at the time being pre-engineering studies were nearly completed uh, and permissions were taken. So we are at the verge of installation. Uh, of course, while uh, doing these issues, we carried out too many projects on different fields like uh, recycling, right, waste management, uh, and so on also. But uh, we have we feel that we are not aware of the, all the consumption regarding energy and uh, also uh, water. So in 2020, we invest on uh, energy management, energy uh, and also water flow meters. So we in install too many flow meters for water and also meters for electricity consumption. All the points that we have question mark and all the buildings, of course. So in 2021, uh, we go one step up about energy efficiency. Before we did some energy efficiency studies in our buildings, but in 2021, we focused nearly on the buildings during this pandemic duration and try to uh, install some uh, or take some uh, energy measures in our buildings in order to prevent undesired loses or undesired consumptions in these buildings. So first of all, we did some audits in these buildings and then continue with the implementation of some projects. And uh, finally, uh, we are, uh, in 2022, uh, we work on supplying free water to our students and uh, we installed too many uh, water fountains in the campus uh, to provide uh, free water to our students. So briefly, this is our sustainability roadmap in CIU. And uh, till now, uh, we have an increasing philosophy or increasing motivation uh, in sustainability. Uh, of course, with the uh, SDGs of uh, uh, United Nations, uh, all of the global, all of the world is concentrated on sustainability. But uh, I think we have a strong backbone in this study. So. Uh, what we uh, did, as I said, uh, sustainability, what are the milestones in our studies? Sustainability Energy Research Center is one of these milestones. As I said, uh, it's uh, formally uh, founded in 2011, but we carried out our studies from 2009, and uh, it has a nearly 13 years background. So uh, with the uh, Center of Excellence, uh, aim in CI. So we did too many uh, studies under this uh, research center. So we carried out nearly 5 megawatt energy power plant, solar power plant in the campus, plus in the uh, other locations of the country. And also we did too many certification program, programs, education, seminars. Also we are doing uh, Till that time, uh, till today, let's say from uh, 2009 till today, we are doing, doing consult consultancy to our uh, administration in Cyprus, generally to the government. So we carry out too many projects under the uh, Energy Research Center. Many of them are uh, implementations, but of course we did too many uh, research projects also, and also we published too many publications uh, under this umbrella. In addition to the Sustainable uh, Research Center, we established Sustainable Campus Office, as I said before, uh, mainly after uh, starting to work with the motivation of UI Green Metrics, we decided to establish this campus office. So, uh, and we are very happy with this because we had opportunity to coordinate, plan, and 
record all these studies from one point. So it, it gives us an opportunity uh, to follow all these studies according to a schedule. Uh, okay, so when we come to energy management, uh, I am sorry, when we come to the energy management and energy, the renewable energy studies in the campus, you can see on this uh, schematic uh, campus map the locations of our photovoltaic plants. So we have, what is the importance of this study? It's the first project, a private project carried out or commissioned in the uh, Cyprus, and it's one of the Still, it's the biggest campus uh, renewable energy plant, which is located in the campus. And the other uh, importance of this study, we have four different types of mounting systems. So these are uh, level roof, inclined roof, terrain, uh, so a land uh, implementation or uh, installation, and also carports. So it's a nice example for our students, mainly engineering students, but all of the students. In addition, uh, it's a nice example for all the public so they can see too many samples of photovoltaic in, uh, installations in a location. Of course, we had opportunity to do some research on these studies also or installations because uh, these are big systems, let's say mid-scale systems. So we have opportunity uh, to find out the influence of different type of installations in PV studies. Uh, here you can see the simple information, uh, basic information of these installations. As you can see, the uh, total area of these installations is nearly 13,000 meters squared, which is amount to 1.3 uh, megawatt total capacity. And uh, on the right side in the graph, you can see easily the energy generation uh, in these systems. Of course, because of meteorological conditions and also some uh, maintenance issues, at each year we cannot have same performance. But generally, when we look generally, uh, we had opportunity. We have opportunity to cover nearly 40% of our energy electricity need from our solar system. In addition to this system, we did, uh, as I said in the uh, flow uh, of the roadmap, uh, we Im implement too many energy efficiency measures. So what we did, this is one of the sample, this is one of the, this is our preparation prep school, English prep school uh, front view and is taken by a thermal camera. What we did in, in our buildings, we did energy audits and we try to find out the undeserved energy loses or gains in our buildings. So uh, as we are living in a hot country, we are generally, con generally concentrated on, uh, of course, ventilation plus cooling. But of course, we have a short winter time and uh, heating is another issue. And mainly in this season, we have our students in our campus. So we try to check all the year consumptions in our buildings. And uh, after we did our uh, general audits in the buildings, we carried out some uh, energy conservation measures and we did technical plus uh, economical analysis and try to decide which of these measures could be applied in our buildings. And uh, for this building, there's a sample, as you can see, we did roof insulation, pipe insulation, the replacement of the lighting with LED uh, infrastructure or LED lamps, let's say, and installation of PV, as these are technically and financially feasible investments. So we apply this, uh, uh, these energy efficiency implementations or measures nearly all of our buildings in the campus in last five years, let's say, but after in last two years, these implementations or rate of these implementations increases. This is the building that I said at the beginning, the energy efficient and also uh, environmental friendly building, we can say. We have too many different implementations in this building. It's a sample building again. Uh, it's a three-story building, uh, generally done uh, or constructed for engineering faculty. Uh, around 15,000 meter square area, its uh, floor area it has. And uh, the basement is uh, the 
The laboratories of the engineering and the other two floors are serving for offices and uh, lecture halls. So what we did in this building, in this building we have uh, all the south facade is covered with solar panels. Uh, this is second generation tin film solar panels. So it's the, I think the, the, the biggest facade in the region, nearly 900 meters square. Also the other interesting implementation, over this building, it's not clearly seen on the photos, but over this building we have uh, solar chimneys. Uh, these solar chimneys are the stacks of uh, are the end point of the stacks which are connected to the uh, areas or let's say the offices and the classes. Uh, so we are we have opportunity to have natural ventilation in this building with the help of these solar chimneys. In addition to these implementations, what we have, we have shading infrastructure, say shading objects, let's say, on the uh, east and west side of the building to prevent direct, direct sunlight inlet. And of course, we applied uh, heat insulation to the building. We use uh, LED lighting, which is most efficient and feasible uh, system at the time being for lighting or illumination. And we apply highly efficient uh, air conditioners with high COP values uh, to decrease the energy consumption. In addition to this, we have a building management system in this building, so we can control all the volume volumes from a center uh, about HVAC uh, conditions. So we try to create a comfort zone in, in all the, uh, let's say, volumes like for classes for offices or and for laboratories they all have different comfort values but we try to provide them and control them from a uh, central system uh, with our automation okay this is the future part future study of the uh, energy issue so we are trying to be the first net zero carbon campus in the region and it's uh, our goal we took the permissions of this uh, project and as soon as we implement the project we are not going to use any fossil fuel based source uh, for our needs in the campus so uh, we will be we will have opportunity to provide all of our energy from renewables uh, so this will be the one of the best uh, uh, maybe cases in the region to be sampled for all the public and all, all the uh, all the people around the other importance in this plant we will have opportunity to get rid of uh, waste so it's not only energy production but we will get rid of waste so it will not serve only carbon emission mitigation but uh, we will also prevent the uh, Disposal of the, these waste like whey, which is one of the biggest problem in the region. Uh, generally, it's poured to the nature. So it's very dangerous liquid, uh, probably all you know. So we will have opportunity to get rid of these uh, wastes and increase the quality of our environment. When we look from the uh, water management side, uh, the one of the most important implementations, uh, of course, you know, Water is very valuable, mainly the drinking water or high quality water becoming uh, scarce day by day. So uh, we must prevent the leak and loses. So uh, initially in 2018, we started to uh, implement the new flow meters to our buildings. And in, in 2020, we, we were able to complete this project. Now we are able to control all the water consumption in the campus uh, and uh, monthly we are taking these values and campus management uh, is controlling it and try to find out if there is any problem. Of course the, uh, it's it's a big campus but uh, it's a need that we should do because in the in an island like Cyprus it's a it's more bigger problem than the other uh, lands because uh, you know we have limited amount of uh, water unfortunately uh, day by day we are having less rain so reaching water is becoming a problem so monitoring is a, uh, one of the important issues 
Uh, of course, while doing the monitoring, we took some other measures also. We tried to increase the uh, water efficiency. So uh, we are trying to get the same performance. We are trying to get the same amount of uh, service uh, as water uh, with the less consumption. We are trying to do this. And as you can see from this graph, uh, what we did, we apply dual flush toilets uh, or reservoirs, which consume less water and uh, decreases the consumption. Uh, we use sensors with the uh, influence of pandemic also, we increase uh, the implementation of these or installation of these sensors. Uh, we apply uh, low flow nozzle faucets, uh, which is uh, valuable also, and it was not applied before, so we did it in the last two years. And uh, we apply faucets with sensors, so it, as I said, it's similar to the flow nozzle fa faucets. This is new case also for us. And now we have very high, let's say, water efficient appliances, highly water efficient appliances, nearly all the campus. And also we did some improvement in the irrigation system because, uh, as I said at the beginning, we have nearly 40% uh, irrigation area. Uh, so we need water there and uh, we have also, we are trying to use recycled water there. In the next slide, I will briefly tell, on, tell this. But uh, what we did, we tried to minimize the consumption by applying uh, efficient uh, sprinkler systems and also we start drip irrigation through the campus and uh, now we are trying to use this drip irrigation in order to prevent the high loss of water because in the previous system uh, because of hot climate there are too much there is too much evaporation and loss of uh, water uh, and this is the source of our irrigation system we are using our recycled water so we have a, a treatment plant water treatment plant with filtration system at the end of this plant which is added in last year so because you know even if you treat the uh, water with this uh, in these reactors in the sewage treatment plants without filtration you cannot use them in a uh, drip irrigation systems because there could be some small particles inside of it so therefore we need to have uh, this filtration system uh, in our uh, in your treatment plant in last year we were able to install it also now we can use our uh, sprinkler systems plus uh, dripping drip irrigation system efficiently with low consumption of water and this is the uh, last project, as I mentioned you uh, at the beginning of my presentation. Which we, uh, the, the aim of this project somehow to provide free drinking water to our students and uh, to all of our uh, faculty buildings. We had opportunity to uh, install the water fountains, uh, and of course, it's a nice project. So now uh, our students are able to obtain their drinking water needs from these water fountains. Uh, of course, we had opportunity during the pandemic season as our students were away, were away the campus to do these constructions. So we get benefit from this duration also. And now uh, they are ready to the use of our students. Okay, uh, finally, uh, I would like to thank uh, all of the audience, all of the listeners. Uh, I try to brief the studies that were carried out in Cyprus International University on energy management and also water management. Uh, I, would like, I would like to once more thank to the UI Green Administration also for giving this opportunity to us. Thank you very much.